What's up YouTube, it's JB Tech Fanatic and I'm back again with another video. This one I'm so excited about. First, let me thank you for joining me, invite you to subscribe if you have not done so, and if you like this video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up, and if you want to know when the latest content is available, don't forget to click the notifications to on. So today we're back in the theater room with Samsung. This is a very exciting release. They have released their all new Samsung 11.1.4 Dolby Atmos surround sound soundbar. This is powerful, it's feature packed, and I can't wait to show it to you. What we're gonna do, we're gonna do an unboxing. I'll give you a close up look at each product individually. We'll go over setup, settings, and then of course my review and performance. I can't wait to get started. Thank you for joining me. Let's, Let's do begin this. with the unboxing. Pretty large box, not that pretty, but all that matters is what's inside. This is Samsung's latest and greatest Soundbar Q950A, featuring Dolby Atmos DTSX True 11.1.4 channel sound, SpaceFit Sound Plus. It has up firing rear speakers included as well as an eight inch sub it features wi-fi bluetooth works with samsung smart things and Open let's get up. this over. we are immediately greeted with styrofoam and the sound bar immediately we see that this is a big quality bar but we'll look at that in a moment moving on I like the fact that everything is individually wrapped in styrofoam to protect, but of course we're gonna have our rear speakers and our sub. The sub is wrapped in great protection. That's another bonus. Next, we have our rear speaker kit and our cables. Taking a look at the top of the bar, it does have some functions that you can control the bar right on the top, starting with the multi-function button then of course we have volume up and down with the plus and minus. And then we have the mic on and off button here. And then of course we have a display that we'll take a look at once it's hooked up. Now we're taking a look at the bottom of the bar. As you can see here, we have our ID set, woofer and rear, and also our network setup buttons, as well as your service port. Left side bottom, is where you're going to run your power cable. Lastly on the bottom, most important part, we have our input. So we have a digital audio optical in, an HDMI one and two, and then of course, HDMI to TV, and yes, it is an eARC support. Taking a look at the backside of the bar, we do have our Dolby Atmos, DTSX, and HDMI. Logo. Nice close up look at the side of the sound bar. It looks great, but it also serves a purpose. Each side has two speakers. As you can see, they're angled differently. This is a 22 speaker complete system. So the way it looks by the diagram is we have two speakers on each side. We also have two speakers on the top of the bar as the up firing speakers. And then of course we have three front firing speakers in the bar alone. Moving on to getting the packaging off of the sub. Definitely large here on the side is where the speaker is exposed. It has that same material over the it. Back side we have where we put the power service port um, the ID set, standby, of course you get your serial number and everything. Moving the camera up a little bit, you can see the nice air hole there. Can't wait to hear this. Other than that, we just have some nice Samsung logoing on the front. The left side is just all black um, with the hard plastic shell and the top is also. Attached to the sub, we had our package here let's check out see what we got likely just some accessories looks like samsung gives us an hdmi cable that is awful nice of them we have one of the power cords here the other one here and then it looks like our remotes we'll look at this they give us a samsung one remote that is designed of course for the their sound system excuse me it's all plastic, but 
I always enjoy the One Remote by Samsung. And in case I fail to mention it, they do give you the brackets on for the bar. the rear speakers. We're going to go ahead and get this opened up, see what we get in here. First thing we have is two more power cords. Starting with the front, we have that nice material as well as some Samsung branding. And of course, there is a front firing speaker. Turn it to the side. There is also a side firing speaker as well as that material. Pretty much you know where the speakers are. Everywhere where there's speakers um, is this nice mesh material. Looking at the top, also there is a top firing speaker or an up firing speaker. Quick look at the back here, we have our Link standby ID set. Lastly, we're taking a look at the bottom. This is where we put our power cable. They also provide a little channel so you can hide the cable and get that flush because this will be sitting down and then forward. We have the entire system unboxed. I went ahead and laid it out. This is definitely a gorgeous system. Samsung did a great job here. Expect a much larger sound bar than you might be used to, but of course, larger comes with more. So I'm expecting this to sound amazing. Getting the setup process, I like to go over everything in detail. In case you're watching, you don't fully understand HDMI ARC, you will now understand how to connect everything. Here you will see HDMI ARC to TV. This is the best method and the only method that you can get Dolby Atmos from. I recommend using a high quality HDMI 2.1 cable. This cable will essentially give all sound coming through your TV now through the bar. This also gives you HDMI 1 and 2. These are essentially extra HDMI ports that I recommend using for like a cable box, a satellite box, or a Blu-ray player. This will free up your HDMI ports on the back of your TV, especially if you're a gamer and you only have one HDMI 2.1 port. This solves your problem. If you have an older TV that only has an optical connection, you also have that option. However, you will not be able to get Dolby Atmos using an optical cable. So if it's time to upgrade, always check, make sure it has an HDMI eARC so you can get the best sound. Everything now that is plugged in from this cable to your TV, this includes any streaming apps on your TV, any devices that you have connected, all the audio will be able to come through your sound system instead of your TV now using HDMI ARC, HDMI eARC, or an optical connection. Now we are looking at the back of the TV. Here you will see also HDMI in, 3 eARC. You are looking for either HDMI ARC or HDMI eARC. If you are using an optical cable, the other side would be connected to the optical port. Again, this will bring all of your audio from anything playing on your TV through your soundbar. It is now time to plug your power into your wall and begin setup. So now we have all of our HDMI cables and our optical cable, if we decided to go that route, connected. Next is placement. Placement is critical to getting a great experience. Several things. There's two ways you can do your rear speakers. If you're going to mount them on the ceiling or the wall, what I recommend doing, and I'm going to show you photos to make it a little better for you, and this is the method I used. So each speaker, the rear and the base module, have the speaker side and the hard plastic side. The hard plastic side is what you want facing your seating area. So rear speakers, imagine the plastic side is facing me and the speaker is facing outward. You want to do this for several reasons. First, the top, you want it facing the ceiling, and of course, that's to give you 
it'll bounce off the ceiling and give you that effect, you know, of the up firing speakers from the rear. The speakers on the side, you actually want them shooting away from you. So what you want is your audio going around you and above you and then right at you from the bar itself. You want to do that on both sides. If you're going to use a stand, what I recommend is having it ear level to the seating area and same method. Top speakers facing up, of course. The speaker itself going this way and the hard plastic facing your sitting area. This way you get complete immersion. This will make such a difference. Once that's done, then of course you'll run the calibration methods. The sound bar itself, you want clear area on the left and right side. If you have flat walls, it's going to sound better, meaning nothing in the way. It's able to just shoot the sound at the wall and sort of bounce back at you. Again, it's more immersion. This particular bar isn't shooting anything, you know, out the back of it. So the bar itself, you want it to be in front of the TV enough so none of the up firing speakers are being blocked by your TV and it essentially almost can use the screen to help give you a better experience. And then of course, you want it your level. You don't want to put your sound bar way up here. You want it kind of facing your sitting area. So if you, you have a very low sitting area, you want to put the bar a little bit lower. For me, this is perfect. You can wall mount this bar. No problem. It comes with actually the brackets. We looked at that before. So that's sort of up to you. But at that point, you're ready to go. Now we're going to go through setup and I'm going to go through it with you. We'll go screen by screen together so that you can get through it and I'll show you how to maximize your experience. But the biggest piece is placement. Let's move on. Now to connect the rear speakers and the sub, each device has this little button. What you want to do is power the sound bar off. Again, once the sound bar is set up, then move on to this step. Now we shut the sound bar off, hold this down for five seconds. We're gonna do this on each speaker and on the sub. This will start blinking rapidly and it will stay that way. Now, there's several ways to do it at this point. You can either power the sound bar on, flip the bar upside down, press in the bottom button for five seconds, the bar will start to blink also, and they will all connect. And press and hold down this button for a few seconds. When you do that, the indicator light will start to blink. Or the manual says to keep the sound bar off, hold the volume up for five seconds, and then power the sound bar on. Once it's connected, you will see a blue solid indicator light on both speakers and the sub. You are now ready to move on. Taking a close-up look at product placement, I mounted mine on the sidewall. As you can see, the top speaker is facing the ceiling. Then we have the front facing speaker facing the audience or myself. Speaker side facing away from the audience. Here we have the sound bar placement. Notice it is right up to the TV, but not under it. That way you do not block the up firing speakers. Here is the base module. I kind of pulled it away. I wanted to give you two suggestions. I actually like to have mine slightly touching my sitting area to give you that rumble experience. Um, but if you do not do that, separate it from where you see it about this much and then flip the output towards the wall. Lastly, here is my other side speaker again facing away and then the hard plastic in this is facing us or when I push it back like this, it's hitting the curtain. But either way, it has full ability to up fire, also side fire and hit that wall and sort of bounce off and then the direct firing speaker is going to be right at the audience. Now it's time to actually get the bar set up with your network and your television.
We've already plugged everything in. What I recommend doing is grab a mobile device, download the Samsung SmartThings app, and also restart your modem. And then let it boot up and then restart your router, which if, if you don't know is your Wi-Fi. You want to do this, make sure you have a strong, fresh connection and that your router is set to allow new items to connect. At that point, have your mobile device connected to the network you want your soundbar connected to. I prefer your five gigahertz. This is going to give you much faster speed, but you might have only 2.4. This will work with either. Now, now we have Samsung Smart Things downloaded. What we're going to do is we're going to open up the app. One of two things are going to happen. Again, I'm going to put the screenshots. We're going to go along together. Either your phone is automatically going to pop up and it's going to say add now like you see. But if that doesn't happen, don't worry. Go ahead, press the plus sign and hit scan nearby. Now, I kind of skip this, of course. The power must be fully on to your bar. Once your modem and routers reset, then turn on your bar. Make sure it's fully powered on and turn it on with the remote. Now, moving on. At this point, we should either have gotten to add now or you found it. Go ahead and click the bar. Let's begin. First thing you're going to see is let's get started with your soundbar. Hit start, move along. Now you're going to have to select a location. For those of you that have multiple homes and different um, smart things in different homes, this is where you would put your location and then of course your room. Go ahead and pick whatever you desire and hit next. Now you're going to get a notification connecting to your soundbar. Now what's going to happen is your bar is going to connect to your phone, which is connected to your Wi-Fi network, which is going to connect the bar to your Wi-Fi network. So this process will just take a few seconds. Now you're going to get a notification for verification once that moves on. It's going to say press volume down on the soundbar to connect. You're going to have to hit the minus button, volume down, on the bar. Move on. Next, it's going to ask you to select which Wi-Fi network you want to connect to. Now, I already told you to be connected. And the reason why is the one it will first recommend is what you're already connected to. So pick whatever you want, one you want, of course, but you should be already connected. Go ahead and tap it and move on. Now it's going to take a little while to register your bar. If your bar has ever been registered to another Samsung SmartThings account, you're going to have to delete it from that account first or it won't let you connect it to a new account. Just FYI. Once that's done processing, it's going to ask you to name your device. You can name it whatever you'd like. I just named it Soundbar. You can also um, set it as your favorite, which I recommend doing. Go ahead and press next. Now, this is going to explain some features. Tap sound. Tap sound is something that um, all the latest Samsung QLED TVs have. It's a great feature. Makes it easy, right? So enjoy your smartphone music on your Samsung smart bar simply by tapping. So if you want to turn this on, it's up to you. I recommend it. Think of it as almost like the NFC days, right? Quick tap, you're connected. But completely up to you. Your bar will work without it. Next, Amazon Alexa is built in. Up to you. You want to set it up. Looks like she's already listening to me. If you want to set it up, go ahead and do so. If you've never set up, then you're going to have to sign up and go through that. So after you hit that, we're going to go to set up. It's going to say authorizing. You're going to get to your Welcome to Alexa page. Get started now, or you can skip it. We're going to get started now. So once that's done, it's going to ask you to allow, you know, all of its privacies up to you again. Press allow if you want to move on. Once that's done, it's going to connect. You're going to be set up and it's going to bring you to your main soundbar menu. Now, the soundbar menu are going to give you some options. What I want to do first 
is we're going to want to get this all tuned up. So we're going to go to auto EQ, really simple. Go to auto EQ, hit tune auto EQ. It's going to say tuning in progress. It's going to use the mic that she uses. I won't say her name or she'll respond again. And it'll take, eh, took about four minutes to complete. That's going to give you the best experience. Once that's completed, you can at this point do whatever you'd like with your bar, meaning you could switch through the sound modes from surround sound to standard. Um, I recommend putting it on adaptive if you're using a Samsung QLED TV and you want to take advantage of using the TV speakers with, you have to have adaptive. FYI, standard doesn't give you the best rear performance, but if you have adaptive or surround, you're going to get your Dolby Atmos when available or um, the game mode also. So these are again up to you. I recommend flipping through, see what you like best for your experience. You also can adjust the sub. You could turn up the bass as well as the treble. So that's all up to you. Depending on when you get your bar and you know, there's going to be obviously software updates that happen. I always recommend checking. Now it should be defaulted to have auto update on, but go ahead and go to information, go to firmware update. As you can see on the screen, press it. It'll say update now, press update. Now, if you have one, it will update. If not, it'll say that you're up to date, but at the bottom, you see auto update. Make sure that that is on. Other than that, we are completely set up on the bar itself. Let's move on to the TV. So as far as settings go on your TV, every TV is going to be a little bit different. Not all TVs are compatible with Dolby Atmos. If they are not, you are not going to be able to get it. However, if your TV is, you need to make sure that it's set. Right now we're looking at a Sony TV. Just wanted to show you something. Here on the left bottom, you see it says HDMI signal format. Now, in order to get the full experience, you actually need to go, if you see we have HDMI 3, which is my eARC, and over to the right, you could see that there's different formats. If you were to just do standard format here, Dolby Atmos would not be compatible. However, you want to go down to Dolby Vision Enhanced. Now doing this basically opens up that HDMI 2.1 and gives you the best quality. Enhanced format will give you great quality also, but in this case, we want to go with the Dolby Vision. Once that's complete, you want to go to External Device Setup. Pick your sound bar. Since we already have our bar set up, What's going to happen when I do setup TV and audio for a better sound experience is it's going to automatically activate the maximum potential. Didn't want to get copyrighted and play that too long, but now you see I went ahead, it, I listened, everything was on, sounded great, and I hit done. Now setup's complete. Simply click finish and move to the next step. Every TV on the market is going to have some sort of display and sound function. Find it, go to settings and find anything that says sound and click. Here now on the right side, you'll see sound. Go ahead and click again. In this case, we want Dolby Audio. Go ahead and click. Anytime you see something that says surround, leave that on auto, and then you can adjust whatever EQ settings you might find on your TV, but just make sure that it's set to Dolby Atmos. Next, I know there's a lot of steps here. Some other TVs are much easier. But here again, we have display and sound. If you notice at the bottom, it says adjust to use headphones and audio system. So it's not just headphones. Once you click, you will notice at the top speakers. Go ahead and click, change that to audio system. TVs that support Dolby Atmos 
all have something that looks like this. Pass through mode, set that to auto. Dolby Digital Plus output. Go ahead to and set this to whatever works for you. I changed my digital audio out to max. Here is one of the two items that typically you'll find on most TVs. E-Arc mode, always put that to auto. And AV Sync, also put that to auto. Sound Sync mode, I turn that on. Home theater control, this allows basically your TV to control your audio system. Again, recommended so you don't have to grab all kinds of different remotes. And now we are done. Everything is maximized on the Sony TV. I'm going to show you how to set it up on your Samsung television. The reason why I started with the Sony is I wanted everyone to know that this sound bar is outstanding with any other TV that has Dolby Atmos. Also, it is just a great sound bar. So now we have our sound bar with my Samsung QLED. First thing we need to do, go ahead and press settings. Once we're in the settings menu, what I want you to do is go down to general, click on external device manager, input signal plus, make sure all of these are checked and turned on. Simply back out. Now there's two ways to do this. First, we're gonna go into the sound. Here you can see I have my TV with my sound bar. Now, this is something that you get as an extra bonus using with Samsung. This is called Q Symphony. It utilizes the soundbar and the TV speakers and uses them all at the same time. You don't have to use this if you don't want to. So there's several options you have. Here it is turned on. As you can see, it sort of gives you a little display there of all of them working together. You can have your bar by itself. You can connect through Wi-Fi, optical, and so on and so forth. For now, I'm gonna show you it together. So when we back out, we're gonna see two sound modes. Now, this is only gonna give you two when it's together. We have game and adaptive sound. Choose adaptive sound unless you're gaming. Next, go down to Expert Settings, and either option, whether you use just the bar or together, you want to make sure that these are set. HDMI eARC should be on auto. Digital output should be on auto. Uh, um, the audio delay, I recommend at zero. There is some times that you might have to slightly adjust it when you're using it together. However, with the latest software updates, it seems to be pretty much spot on. You also need to make sure that the Dolby Atmos um, compatibility is checked to on. Now, back out. Now we're back and we're gonna select the sound bar by itself. When you do this, you're gonna have some more options. So now when we go to sound mode, you will see we have standard, surround, game, and adaptive sound. Depending on what you're doing, pick what's best, but honestly, I recommend everything except for standard. I typically just leave it on adaptive sound. Also wanted to show you, you of course have your quick toggles. You can turn intelligent mode on. You have your adaptive sound, standard, surround, game right here. Now we can also, we're right now just on the soundbar. I can simply switch to TV plus soundbar. You will see that this will automatically switch to give us just the game and the adaptive sound. Now, if we just slide over to the right, you have three options. I recommend auto, but you do have pass through and also PCM. Lastly, I just wanted to make a note Samsung's latest TVs, their QLED series, 4K, 8K, are outstanding TVs. If you're looking for something that goes well with your Samsung smart appliances, phones, tablets, and you're gonna get this sound bar, it's definitely worth having them together. 
Not everyone's going to use the TV plus soundbar. However, it is a very cool feature. It sounds amazing. Samsung has definitely brought their Q Symphony to the next level and it will just give you that added immersion. So now I wanted to give a look. Here we have Samsung SmartThings. I'm connected to the soundbar and we have our Samsung QLED. As you can see, no device connected. I'm on TV speaker. I'm gonna switch. Now we are just on the soundbar. So on your app, just like your TV, we have all of our sound modes. Back out. We're gonna to go to TV with the bar together. Now we can go to, it'll change. Sorry, go here. We have game and adaptive. So everything works perfectly in sync with each other. Next, if we just switch, you'll see that it switches with it. But it's almost, you know, perfectly synced. So now we're on TV and soundbar together. If you go to advanced settings, we have our voice enhancement, bass enhancement, and night mode. Now you will get these with any TV you use it on. Voice enhancement, sorry, voice enhancement works great. Bass, if you want that extra thunder. But probably one of the coolest things that I like about this is night mode. My wife is one of those, you know, that doesn't like it to be really loud, especially at night. When you click night mode on, it literally switches the bar to more or less something that just helps with voice enhancement. It tones everything down. So also on the flip side, remember, if you have night mode on, you are not getting nowhere near the full effect. Just a few more things. If we go back here, if we click on these, we have our information where we can do our firmware update that we saw earlier. You also can have your device settings, network status, Bluetooth pairing, audio feedback if you like that on, and then your Spotify settings, and of course, Alexa. Then, of course, we have where you can turn up your sub if you like that extra bass. This will work for either setting, and again, this works on any brand TV with Dolby Atmos. And then lastly, if you go to your EQ, you have bass and treble. I'm gonna do a few sound tests. First thing I'm gonna show you is on the Samsung TV, I have mic'd it up by the bar in the TV itself because really the difference that we're getting is when the TV syncs with the sound bar. So I'm gonna show you that and then we're gonna go into the theater room and do you know the complete system with Dolby Atmos. These are both Dolby Atmos files. Again, I can't show you video without getting copyrighted. So I'm just gonna do a quick action scene, have it mic'd up and hopefully you'll be able to hear some of the difference. So basically what you get is a great separation of each individual sound coming from the front. Now, of course, with Atmos, you're going to get that all around you. But now let's move into the theater. Now we're going to do a sound test. What I'm going to do is I'm literally going to run several minutes of Dolby Atmos clips to get the best experience. I recommend putting on a good set of headphones so that you can get a better idea of what it actually sounds like. And to take care of two things at the same time and to prevent copyright, I'm going to put images of all the specifications of this system on the screen as it plays. So you're going to be hearing the audio as well as you can read the screen and get every detail you need. And we will finish it up with the review. Let's do this moving around you with 10 point accuracy. Whether the 
soundscape sets the mood of a scene. Whoa! What is this place? Oh, it's so funny, guys, let's go! What captures the full extent? Do you want to know my secret? Of nature's fury. This, it's just the beginning of Dolby Vision. Because what you thought was black is... thoughts. First, let's say it again. This is the HW Q950A and it is a true, I know people have questions about this, 11.1.4 channel Dolby Atmos surround system, sound bar, whatever you want to call it. It is the first time that I have put a Samsung surround sound product at my top three favorite products for sound. Now, if you've watched my channel before, you know I love Bose products, but I have often said that Dolby Atmos in a sound bar isn't real. And that was based off of, if you go to a movie theater and there's Dolby Atmos, you're talking systems that cost hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not more, depending on which theater you go to, maybe less. 
So you get a example, $300 sound bar. They, they like to slap Dolby Atmos over everything these days. And it's like, my Samsung phones have Dolby Atmos. Is that real Dolby Atmos? No. So that was my point. So I get this product and I set it up, I turn it on and I was jaw to the floor. And I'm just being real with you. It sounds outstanding. There's no way I can let you hear what I hear. All I can say is go out and buy it and try it. Now, everyday listening, TV, voice clarity, superb, a great overall, just normal experience, if you would. Dolby Atmos, Dolby Digital, um, it doesn't matter. Everything sounds great, right? Everything, if I was to go audio-wise, I would say a 10. There's also something that's really great about this product. Such a powerful system, it can get so loud, my wife, not a fan of that. So at nighttime, I want clarity, but I don't want all, you know, the theater experience. Night mode, you turn it on, it throttles everything down 80% and enhances the voice clarity at the same time. Outstanding. It's like Samsung thought of everything. The fine tuning that they've done just from last year to this year, has went from a product that, you know, was like maybe if I was to list products in the price category, I would put Samsung like maybe in 10th place. This year, it's in my top two recommendations. For the price, you're getting a true sounding theater experience if you position the product right and set it up correctly with Dolby Atmos. It's that great. They give you two HDMI ports. We've talked about that with 4K pass-through. No quality loss. Gamers, you will not get VRR or 120 frames per second gaming, but you will get clean, crisp, 4K, 60 frames per second gaming with, you won't even notice the difference, right? That is awesome because you get two extra HDMI ports to do that and it frees up some extra ones on the back. Also, I love Samsung Smart Things, brings you know all my smart home into one ecosystem, yada yada, but you have all the controls on any of your mobile devices. You have your adjustments, you have your EQ, you have everything you need right there. You also have it on the bar itself now, let's talk about things I don't like. I want to be very clear by stating I love the one remote, but the one remote that came with this sound bar is garbage. It rattles in the hand, feels like the batteries are bouncing around, and yes, I have them in properly. But the great thing is you don't even need it, right? Your TV remote will sync with it, your original QLED remote will work with it, or your mobile device. The other thing that's, I would say, kind of a drawback is the screen on the bar itself. Not so great, but yeah, I guess you don't really need it so much. But again, it could be better for the price. And lastly, I love the way the cloth material looks, but already it's starting to snag. It catches dog hair or pet hair very easily. So I would have liked to see a shiny exterior like a Bose um, 700. I like that a lot. But other than that, outstanding. Another part that surround sounds often aren't great in is music. Not only do you have Spotify built in that you can easily cast from your Samsung smart things, you also have the ability to use Alexa, which is built in, so you can kind of, it's an actual, <laughs> actual Alexa device built in, but, they also put tap and play. So think of that like NFC, right? But it's easy to use. It's easy to set up. And it sounds like a professional calibrated system. So sound, I give it a 10. And I, I know that's nothing is perfect, but it's a 10 for me based off price category. Now, 
the overall size of the bar. It's massive. So if you're looking for just something for voice clarity or something small to fit under a small TV, this is definitely not the device for you. It's massive under 75 inch and 85 inch TVs, but the reason it's massive is it's full of quality specs, speakers, and everything you want. So all in all, looks beautiful, chance of snagging, pet hair, not great, screen, not great, everything out, amazing. I love it, I recommend it, and I believe wholeheartedly that you will love it too. Check it out, hear it for yourself, let me know what you think in the comment section. I really want to know. But I want to say to Samsung, you did it. You finally got in my top recommended products for soundbars. I'm a huge Samsung fan. You should know that up front. If you've watched my channel, you know that. But this time, they finally did it. Lastly, I want to talk about syncing with your QLED TV. I let you hear it a little bit. The Q Symphony. It's awesome. It's great, it sounds good, it gives you all kinds of unique sounds, but it's not something that should stop you from not buying it if you don't have a Samsung TV, because the Adobe Atmos and everything else and all the other formats that are with it sound amazing too, but it is really cool and it is definitely nice to sync it with a new QLED TV, but don't let that deter you from buying that it. That concludes my review on Samsung's all new HWQ950A. This system is one of my top recommended systems. It sounds outstanding whether you're listening to music, watching sports, or you want that true home theater experience. In fact, in its price category, it is now my top recommended system. It is just outstanding. Samsung gives you everything you need to get started. And whether you're just getting into, you know, gray audio or you are one that is just a fanatic like I am, this system will impress you. I also want to say thank you for joining me and remind you, I do YouTube for you and you only. So if you need me, please reach me in the comment section. If I miss anything, you have any questions, I'll answer you there. You can also come follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, at JB Tech Fanatic. But best place to get in contact with me is in the comment section. As always, I like to slow things down for a moment and remind you life is short. Don't forget to love your family, take care of each other, go out today and do a small act of kindness for someone. The world is a mess right now and the only people that can change it is you and I, and the smallest act of kindness can change someone's day. I wanna thank you so much for joining me, invite you to subscribe one last time. If, if you like this video, hit that thumbs up. I got tons of new content coming. This year's been crazy. Things take forever to get, but I'm working on it as fast as possible. Thank you for joining me. I can't wait to see you in the next video and talk to you in the comment section. And until then, I'm JB Tech Fanatic, and I'm out. Peace.